Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and today we are going to set up a Michael Harding watercolour palette. Um, I have 15 colours here and I recently found this little um, airtight watercolour palette by Montmartre at TK Maxx. Um, it has 16 wells for paints so I'm just going to add a Venetian red from Rembrandt to the mix um, just so I can easily mix darks and I like Venetian red anyway. Um, so we're going to fill this up today. I'm going to let it um, dry out for a few days and then we'll come back and paint something with it. So um, let's get to it. I don't usually set up my palette in this sort of colour order, I normally go in rainbow order starting from yellow, um, but I kind of wanted to keep the darker colours over on this side, keep my lights on this side, and then got warmer colours and then cooler colours. I seem to have a lot more greens and blues than I do the warmer colours, but um, I think that should work out okay. Alright, so first up we have yellow Bentamidazolone, which is PY. 151. Squeeze that out. It's a really nice little palette, it's really quite small. Um, so it's great for, it would be great for taking out on the go if that was something you wanted to do. I'll let you know what the size is in a second. It is about eight and a quarter inches or 21 centimeters and there. When it's closed, it would be about what, just under four inches or ten centimeters, and when it's open, it's about twenty centimeters or eight inches, approximately, maybe a little bit more than that. But it's really quite small and um, compact. So next up, we have Yellow Lake, which is PY one eighty. Okay. I'm squeezing out a little bit more of the yellows than I will of the other colours because I seem to use up yellow a lot quicker. Next up we have Panacridon Gold. This is PY150 and PR209. Then we have Scarlet Lake which is PR170. Then we have Cronacridone Rose, which is PV19. Then we have the one Rembrandt colour, this is Venetian Red, and that's PR101. This one's been sat in a drawer for a while, so it's a bit of binder separation. Let's get our little mixy mix. Okay. Right. Then we have back to Michael Harding, Hook is Green. This is PG36, PR101 and PY180. Get the lid back on, there we go. Then we have Moss Green, which is PY150, PB29 and PR209. So this is almost basically like the quinacridone gold mixed with ultramarine blue. Okay. 
Then we have Bright Green Lake, that's PY118, PG7. It's kind of like a bright May green type of colour. It's not a colour I would use on its own, but it's a really good mixer. Then we have Aqua Green, which is PG7 and PB15, colon 3. So that's Thalo Green, Blue Shade, and Thalo Blue, Green Shade. So this is basically a slightly bluer version of a Thalo Green. So I would probably use it the way I would use a Thalo Green for mixing. Again, it's not really a colour I would imagine using on its own. Then we have Caribbean Turquoise, oh, which is very similar to the Aqua Green. This one is PB15 colon 3 and PG7, so it's just the same pigments but in the opposite order. This is um, more a colour I would use, again, more for mixing than on its own. And I would treat this more like a phthalo blue green shade, just with a bit more green in it. Then we have Vivid Blue, that's PW4, PW6, PB15, colon 3 and PG7. So when I swatch this, this is a very opaque colour because of the white included, but it works out as a non-granulating version of like a cobalt teal or cobalt turquoise type of colour. Then we have Thalo Blue Red Shade, this is PB15, colon 1, so this is a warmer version of a traditional phthalo blue green shade. Phthalos are very potent colours, they are very dominant in mixes. Then we have indigo, it's PBK6, PB15 colon 3 and PV19. I always love a good indigo or a Payne's grey in, um, on a palette for nice quick darks. Then we have Belladonna, which is one of their unique mixes. It's PV23, PR122, well, sorry, PR112, and then PV29. And finally, we have Moonlight, which is like Michael Harding's version of uh, Moonglow. It's the same pigments, PG18, PB29 and PR177. Oh, air pocket. Okay, that's definitely a stiffer mixture in this one. A bit harder to squeeze out. All right, that's the palette. I'm just gonna give it a little tap to um, try and get the paints to settle a little bit. I'm going to set this aside now to dry. I will um, write up or draw up a swatch card thingy to go. I'll probably put it on the lid. And then, um, and then yeah, I'll be back probably in a couple of days once this has dried out a little bit to swatch out the colours for the swatch card and then to do a little painting with it. So I will, I will see you then for the rest of the video.
Okay guys, so <laughs> apparently I couldn't wait until um, the paint's dried and I wanted to get on with painting with it today. So um, this is the little painting I came up with. It's I'm not entirely happy with the trees, it's just too much darkness. I didn't manage to retain the lightness as much as I'd hoped and I'm pitiful at painting rocks so this is my poor attempt at rocks. Um, but overall quite like the looseness of the painting. It wasn't supposed to be anything super um, detailed or specific or anything like that. It was based off of a reference picture I found on I think it's Unsplash, uh, which is a royalty free website where you can use their pictures to paint from, I guess, without any fear of um, copyright infringement and all of that. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I'm not massively amazing at landscapes, but I am hoping to try and improve over time and this is just the first step in that. Um, the paper I had issues with, you can sort of see here on the edges, um, I think something's gone wrong with the paper. Um, it's quite old paper, it's Arteza watercolour paper, 100% cotton, and this was the last sheet on the pad. You can see it down this edge as well, where it's gone a bit funny and it's also gone funny if I can get it to focus so this lighter green area was fully dry before I painted over it and there is quite a bit of feathering especially around the rocks for some reason and a bit here at the edge so there's something up with this paper that I'm not entirely sure about but it's finished now so hopefully my other papers won't be damaged and um, I won't have this problem going forward um, I also did the swatch chart for it as well. This will go on the top of the palette once it is, um, once the paints have dried. And just a quick note on the actual palette itself. It, like, while it is small, one thing you may notice or may have noticed while I was painting is that um, there's no beading. This palette mixes perfectly. There's no beading up, no prep needed, um, nothing like that. And the paints just sit perfectly fine on on the palette there's no you know it just sits in a nice puddle on the doesn't bead up into lots of little spots so you can really quite clearly see your mixes as you're working on them which is great it's what you want from a palette plastic palettes tend to bead up a lot but I was happy to find that this one doesn't do that um, but yeah anyway but I also wanted to add that if you um, are interested in purchasing any of these paints I will make sure to leave links down below they are affiliate links and all that means is I get a small commission from Jackson's it's, uh, Jackson's is where you can purchase these from at the moment I believe um, I just get a small commission when you purchase from there it doesn't cost you anything extra but it's a really easy way for you to support the channel my affiliate links are clearly marked with an asterisk in the description box so you can see which ones are and which ones aren't um, and yeah I really appreciate it when you do use those links and until next time enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you soon take care bye